Welcome to Retro Crisis, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own Retro Pi device using a Raspberry Pi. A special thanks to Dav Sketches for reaching out to me and requesting this guide. Please do check out Dav Sketches Instagram page. He's a very talented artist, and if you like anime and superheroes, you're going to like a lot of his work. So in order to build your RetroPi device, you're going to need a few bits of hardware and a few bits of software. Firstly, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi device. I personally use a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, I think it's called. I picked this up back in 2016 and it seems to run the systems I want it to run. Uh, ideally, if you can get a Raspberry Pi 4 or above, that would be perfect. You're also going to need something to power the Raspberry Pi. So I use a, an older Samsung phone charger that just happens to be compatible. But if you can, try to purchase a, an official Raspberry Pi charger. You're also going to need an HDMI cable to connect your Raspberry Pi to a, a modern TV screen. I do have another video where you can connect your Raspberry Pi to an old school CRT TV. If that interests you, do check that video out after you've watched this video. Also, it'll be ideal if you have a, a keyboard on hand so we can configure things like the Wi-Fi. And you're also going to need a game controller. USB, ideally. I use uh, an Xbox 360 controller which has the wireless transmitter and this kind of works the same as a USB game controller. And you're also going to need an SD card. If you have an SD card reader on your laptop, that's perfect. So that's the hardware you need. There is a uh, one particular bit of software you're going to need to download. If you can pop over to raspberrypi.com and go to software, we're going to need to download this little bit of software called Raspberry Pi Imager. It's available for Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu. I'm personally going to be using the Windows version because I'm recording this video on Windows, but I have used this successfully on Mac OS. I personally have little experience with Linux, so if you're clever and you know how to use Linux, feel free to give it a go. Right, so you want to open up Raspberry Pi Imager, and the first thing you want to do before you click on anything is stick your SD card into your computer and make sure the computer recognizes it. First uh, button you need to click is choose OS. So that's the operating system. So we click that and you get a new menu open. We want to go all the way down to emulation and game OS and just click the little arrow next to it to go to that menu. And once you're there, you're going to see RetroPie and Recal Box. Now, both of these are actually very good uh, gaming OSs for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, I personally use Recalbox and RetroPie, but for this video, I'm gonna show you how to install RetroPie, which is probably the most common uh, gaming OS on Raspberry Pi, and I'd say it's the best documented as well. So if you do run into issues, there's a lot of documentation for it, and the community is huge, whereas Recalbox is, only has a fraction of the uh, support and community, I'd say. But both of the operating systems are great. So we click on RetroPie, and then you'll get different versions of RetroPie. So depending on which Raspberry Pi hardware you have, you have to pick a specific one. So the top one is RPI 1 and 0, so that's the very first Raspberry Pi and the very first Raspberry Pi 0. Next one, RPI 2, 3, which means Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. And the fourth is the most current one, which is Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi 400, which is that one that looks like a keyboard. So as I'm using a Raspberry Pi 3, I'm going to click on RPI 2 slash 3. Done. Next, you want to select your SD card. So I'm going to go to choose storage. So I'm using a 32 gig card. I would recommend a minimum of 16 gig. Obviously, the higher you can afford, the better. So click 32 gig card. Great. So now we've selected our SD card. We want to write to the SD card. So it's a matter of pressing write click yes because we're going to wipe that card. Now this process takes a little while so just be patient, go make yourself a coffee or something and uh, just sit tight. Perfect, now the process is finished. I will click continue and then make sure you safely eject the SD card from your laptop.
So the first time Raspberry Pi boots up, it takes quite a long time, so just be patient. It's just doing all the configuration and various other bits and pieces. Excellent. So when you come to this screen, you want to plug in your USB controller, and then you want to keep hold of any button until the RetroPie recognizes your device, and then simply follow the on-screen prompts to make sure uh, you've configured your gamepad uh, appropriately. Great, okay, so the first thing we want to do is make sure we've uh, connected to the Wi-Fi. So on your gamepad, go to configuration, and I think it's on an Xbox controller, you want to press the B button. So the B button tends to be confirm, and the green button tends to be the uh, kind of cancel. So I'll go to RetroPie, and then we want to go down to uh, Wi-Fi. And then we're just going to wait for some stuff to load up. Now it will be useful if you've got your USB keyboard plugged in. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set our Wi-Fi country. So we go to yes and press enter. And then go down to localization options. And then press right to go to select and then press enter. And then we want to go down to WLAN country. So go down to it and press right, go to select and then press enter. And then simply scroll down to whichever country uh, you're living in. So I think this is some kind of legal requirement. I'm not quite sure why, but anyway, we just have to do it. Otherwise we can't use our Wi-Fi. So as I'm in uh, England, I'm going to select Great Britain, UK. Press right to go to OK and then press Enter. And that's it. I've set my country to Great Britain. And then just press Enter and then go down. Press right and right again to go to finish. And we just need to reboot our device. Perfect. Now you're back at the RetroPie home screen and just go to configuration again. And then all the way down to Wi Fi. And now we want to make sure we can connect to uh, the Wi-Fi device in your home. So we go to connect to a Wi-Fi network and I'm going to select my Wi-Fi network. And then using the USB keyboard that we've attached, I can type in my password. Do remember it's case sensitive. Sometimes it takes a little while to uh, recognize, so just be patient. And bingo, it looks like it's connected the uh, first time. Uh, that normally goes wrong every time I try to do it, uh, but no, that's great. So now we're connected, you'll notice up top, uh, you can see your IP address and uh, wireless uh, SSID and stuff. And now we can just go to exit. And now we're ready to copy some games onto the RetroPie. Now, I don't want to get too involved in that whole web of uh, the legality of ROMs or, or games. Uh, how you find them or what you do to obtain them is totally down to you. I don't encourage any piracy or, or anything like that. So for the illustration purposes of this video, I'm going to be dumping my copy of Shadow Warriors on the NES and using that ROM file uh, to copy over to RetroPie. So what you want to do is open up an explorer window, go to the address bar, type in backslash backslash RetroPie. Now assuming that your computer and the Raspberry Pi are on the same Wi-Fi network or wired network, this should work fine. So press enter, and now it's going to scan the network for your RetroPie device. Now you're going to uh, see this kind of uh, username and password box appear. So your RetroPie device does have a username and password on it. The default username should be Pi, and I believe the default password is admin or lowercase. And then just press OK. Great. And now you'll see the visible network shares uh, that your RetroPie device uh, adds to your network. Now where we want to go to is the ROMs folder. And you'll see a list of all the kind of pre-configured systems on your RetroPie device. So as I'm using uh, the NES version of Shadow Warriors, I'm going to go to NES. 
uh, NES being a Nintendo Entertainment System. And then I'll just right click and paste the game file. And there we have it. Now, if we return back to the RetroPie uh, device, you want to go back to the main home screen, press start, go all the way down to quit, select quit, and we want to restart emulation station. So emulation station is this kind of front end we're looking at right now. So it's more of a software restart rather than a hardware restart. So we go restart emulation station. Do you want to really restart? Yes, we do want to really restart. And we just wait. It doesn't take very long. And there we go. You'll see the Nintendo Entertainment System menu has appeared and it says there's one game available. And if we go into it, you'll see Shadow Warriors appear or whichever game you've copied. That's pretty much how uh, to copy games over to your RetroPie and you should be ready to, to start playing. Just one more note, if you do try to copy loads of games in one hit uh, over to your RetroPie device, just keep in mind that the transfer speeds tend to be really slow and the process can take a long time, so just be patient. So I do have another video where it shows you how you can add a Bluetooth controller to your uh, RetroPie, so you don't need to keep using a wired controller. And also, if you see some black borders around your screen, I've got a video which shows you how to remove those black borders. But anyway, I hope this video was useful. If it was, please uh, subscribe or press like. Uh, that would mean a lot to me. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.